Hello, love. Welcome to your soul support message for the highest and greatest good of the Elsh Collective. If you find this message or it finds you outside of this date, there is still a message in it for you. Something still applies. We're going to get right into it. We're going to talk about love. Love, love, sweet love today. The energies of the divine feminine really palpable coming through. Um, I was first shown a swan and I was also connecting to the energies of Thea Aphrodite, otherwise known as the goddess Aphrodite. And immediately uh, there was a focus here on self-love and your own inner beauty, your own really beauty, period. And that honoring that, honoring your unique beauty through a practice of self-love, okay? With these beautiful, divine, nourishing, these divine feminine energies coming in, right? 111 on the counter as I say that. And they showed me it's interesting because these divine feminine energies feel like Aphrodite, but they also feel just very much like the goddess, right? Whatever resonates for you. These goddess aspects of the goddess that can be really nuanced and different, right? We have a very kind of like, you know, um, we can have on a very sort of superficial level, a very simple understanding of what Venus or Aphrodite represents, right? And it's usually love, beauty, things like that. But it, it goes deeper than that when you start to delve into those energies. It's about values. It's about honoring yourself, your body, your own sensuality, your own beauty and what that means, right? Amongst other things, right? Um, and we do have a lot of Taurian energy, you know? We're in the midst of a lot of Taurian energy at the moment. Um, so there's a lot of this, th what think, things of value, thinking of your own values. What do you value? What do you value in the physical, right? Questioning what things are actually valued in the physical that maybe we give too much weight to as well, okay? I don't want to get off topic here and digress, but I'm going to get back to the crystal here. So this is Garnierite. Sometimes it's referred to as green moonstone. It's actually got different properties from Moonstone though, but I'm bringing the energy of this into the reading because this is a very beautiful, juicy, um, divine feminine energy, really multifaceted. I find when I work with this crystal, and I haven't worked with it a lot, but when I, when I have worked with it, I get different aspects of this divine feminine energy coming through. Sometimes it's more nourishing. Sometimes it's more like, mm, like spicy, other times, it's just, it holds you, right? So I'm bringing that energy into this reading now and being directed to ask through the Rumi Oracle and the Island Times Wellness, the Island Time Wellness Love Oracle, which is interesting because we're talking about love here, but more the relationship you have to yourself when it comes to how much you value yourself, how much do you want yourself, how much do you love yourself, and then how that gets reflected in your relationships. Because if that isn't really, if there's a low sense of self, and I mean low esteem here of self when I say low, that reverberates into our relationships that can manifest or align to relationships that are not necessarily in alignment with our highest and greatest good, but we also can be in relationships where we have to learn a lot about this through the other. Another very Libran lesson, of course, okay? So I'm gonna get right into shuffling these cards because I really don't want this to go too, too long today. Messages of soul support with regard to self-love and how that reverberates into our relationships with others. Now, this could be familial, this could be love, romantic relationships, this could be relationships with regard to work, I'm also hearing, really focusing on this idea of esteem. Like how do you esteem, hold yourself in high esteem, holding yourself in high esteem. And for this to come through 
for the Elsh Collective. There's definitely a message here. We got a lot. She wants to say a lot. Um, there's definitely a message here about this with regard to things that we're going through. Okay. <laughs> Divine discontent is at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so this is immediately connected to experiences in relationships where things have not gone the way that you had hoped. But understanding that this was part of the plan, this was part of your journey, it's all connected. It's connected to what I'm hearing, soul contracts, energetic signatures, people you, you signed up to meet to learn lessons from, okay? That's a number 12, which is interesting. That's the divine masculine and the divine feminine coming together to form a creation, which is the three and in balance. Okay, now, before I get to the huge chunk of cards that popped out, I'm gonna focus on these two because these two actually flipped over. And I just want you to look at these images because they're just absolutely stunning. Rasuli is the artist for these. This is the Atlanta Fairchild deck. Okay, so take a look at this. Like I'm getting a lot of transformation vibes from this. From nothing to everything. This is the number 16. I'm seeing a butterfly in this. That's what's coming through. And I'm also seeing that hibiscus flower in this image. From nothing to everything. This is a huge nod to having learned the lessons coming from this is beautiful coming from a place of lack in terms of how you see yourself to full-on self-love massive changes in how you see yourself right and how you value yourself that is 16 that's a number going deeper that's also a nod here to the divine masculine energies coming into balance because we've got a one and a six here okay but these are the energies of having gone deep like deep to learn the lessons a huge acknowledgement of that and then blood angel a seven again so what she's directing me to here is that this is also ha this is also having to do with an with ancestors with the ways that we in healing ourselves heal our ancestors we heal the lineage and the line of our ancestors right it's in our blood um, the ways that we have been conditioned the ways our ancestors were programmed or conditioned to be and a huge healing taking place with regard to that so much work being done around how when you really value and embrace yourself and not sacrifice yourself for this for a collective effort, let's say, where you have to kind of forget yourself. There's a huge tide turning in that energy. That's what I'm hearing. And that is pretty much in alignment with where we are energetically at the moment. So there's confirmation for that, okay? So, Dance of the Feminine. I'm just gonna show these very quickly. That's a 42, that reduces to a six. This is honoring that divine feminine energy. Commitment, number 31. This is the energy of stability, committing to yourself. Look at that beautiful image. Like commit to your heart, commit to yourself, commit to your dreams is what I'm hearing. Sacred soul sister, beautiful divine feminine energy coming out. I'm getting sisterhood of the rose energy coming through here as well. It could be a confirmation from you if you're watching, 37. That reduces to a 10, which is a one. It's going back to coming full circle again and a new cycle beginning. That goes back to the ancestor energy here as well. And it's interesting because it's 37 and a seven again. That is that energy of going deeper, coming in, a nod to lovers, the lover and the beloved. Yeah, beautiful. This is interesting. It's a 35, it reduces to an eight. So this is about you being a lover to yourself, you being your own beloved. And with the 35 reducing to an eight there, that's an energy of also breaking up a cycle, like having, again, to come back to this third perspective, breaking up a cycle. Some would even say like the eight is the, is the number of the self in the sense like how we 
energetically feel and then manifesting that out into the world, right? Through the energy of the eight. But it could also be a nod to breaking these sort of karmic cycles around relationships. And the human gift, ah, oh, number 17. I don't think I've ever pulled this card before. This card has never pulled or popped out of this deck. That reduces to an eight again. So we've got sevens, eights, sixes coming through here, right? Coming back into balance. Coming back into balance with that lemniscate and that midpoint. That is the human gift, being able to balance polarities. These beautiful angelic energies also available to you to tap into, to support you, these beautiful divine feminine angelic energies to help you. Just look up. That's what I'm hearing. When I look at this card, just look up. Look up. Okay. All right. Asking now through the Island Time Wellness Oracle cards for these final messages of support. It's beautiful. Ooh, ascending. Ascending came out. It was the first one. Transcending obstacles, learning, expansion, new phase, preparing for union. This goes with this card, this transformation, butterfly coming out of the chrysalis, being part of your journey, right? Um, healing. Really deep healing through this divine discontent. Hearing it happening, it happened or it's happening for you, not to you, okay? Coffee cup, look at that. Meeting and conversing, savoring the moment, feeling uplifted and friendship. That's a nod to aligning to your true authentic self and then meeting people along your journey in the physical, right? And when I say that, it could be, you know, yeah, you might meet people online and be part of a group online, right? But um, meaning that it's manifesting in a way in the physical reality around you because you've done the work. You've done the work. Ah, and that's huge. That's huge. Okay, final message here. Oh, separation. Okay. Sadness, missing you, thinking about you, yearning and unsure of the future. So some of you may be in this space right now of not knowing where things are going to go next. And the only and the thing the only thing I'm hearing here is like you've got to just give it time, give it space, give it space. Um, take that divine feminine approach, right? So much of the energy is supporting that in this reading. To not push, to not strive, to not be critical of yourself, right? Just relax into what you're feeling. Observe it. Give yourself space. So much healing energy in this as well. Give yourself space. Again, time, journaling, meditating, reflecting on things. And we've got sunglasses at the bottom of the deck, watching, looking, stalking, gaslighting, perception, and focusing out. Okay, so these obsessive, okay, so these obsessive energies, this is what's coming through, like where we keep on checking, we keep on looking. Maybe you are, you know, stalking someone online. And when I say that, I say that lightly, okay? Um, you know, checking their Facebook, checking their Instagram, whatever, right? Depending on what this is, this is specifically coming through as a, there's two messages coming through here. Actually, it's kind of twofold. So whether this is something that you are actually doing, or maybe somebody is doing it to you, right? This energy gets us nowhere. This energy, if anything, is like salt in the wound, right? If we're in this separation, right? This energy is like salt in the wound. It just makes it worse and it keeps you stuck. It keeps you in an energy where you are stuck in that chrysalis and you're not busting out of it, okay? The other message that's coming through with this is also um, this general kind of, what are you focusing on, right? It's a twofold message here. As opposed to keeping yourself stuck in the past, where are you not focusing on where you want to be right now, right? The future, the things that are in your control, because you can't control anybody else. And you have to, I mean, it's my belief that you must always, always respect someone else's free will, okay? 
Okay, that is it for this soul support message. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking these videos, for subscribing, for sharing, for commenting. I'm sending you so much love wherever you are in love and liberation always. Mwah.